Well, hello, darlings. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> I'm Drusa Lachey. Today, I'll be talking to you about how to look expensive without paying that expensive price tag. Before we go anywhere else, before we do anything else, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Okay, don't play yourself. Don't play it. Don't play yourself. Now, this may not be everyone's cup of tea. I understand that. And I also understand that looking expensive is not the most important thing in life. I get it, guys. Don't think I'm like the most shallow person on this earth because I am not. Let's get started on these gems. Fur. For some reason, fur just always looks more expensive. Let me let y'all in on a little secret. These two pieces right here, okay, are from a fabric store. You can go and get fur cut let me make a correction faux fur i don't need pita coming after me okay pita this this is faux fur no flower bombs no flower bombs you do not need to be spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on fur unless you got it like that but if not i mean this is an alternative i automatically look bougie you just wear it off your shoulders especially if you have a nice like gown on or a dress Oh, and especially if you have some silk on, honey, honey. Something else that you guys should know is that wearing a coat on your shoulders makes you look that much more expensive because it makes it seem like you're too cool to even put your hands through the sleeves. Look, look at that, just boom. I am aware that it is Brick City outside, okay? If you're on the East Coast, it might be a little too cold for this. Your health is more important, so definitely stay warm. You can definitely pull it off if you're going from like a car straight inside. Structured fashion pieces always look like a piece of art and they also look like you done went to the most high-end store and splurged. I have this neoprene jacket that I bought from H&M a couple years ago. I paid around $60 for it, but it was originally like $300. This neoprene jacket has structure and it's actually the piece that I used for like my very first studio photo shoot. If you find something that fits your taste that has a structured look, go for it. Okay. Make sure your clothes are tailored. If you want something to fit in like an oversized um, way, then don't get it tailored. But if something is supposed to fit a certain way, like a, a blazer, or a suit or some type of coordinate set. Try to make sure it fits you like the best possible way that it can. If you have to take some sides in, do that. This is one of my favorite blazers of all time. It's this Calvin Klein blazer that I bought from Bolton's. I didn't have to get anything tailored or taken in. It just fits the way it's supposed to. It just looks so put together. I mean, how do you think Olivia Pope walks around like Olivia Pope? Her clothes are on point, okay? And of course, like, she has a lot of connections and stuff, but that's besides the point. Your clothes fitting a certain way makes you look a little bit more silk and satin. We'll just get you overboard. It would just elevate you. It would just bring you to higher heights. When I was in college, I had silky, satiny sheets and everyone would just always comment on them like, oh, you fancy. Silk robe versus like a cotton robe. You would automatically think the person walking down the stairs with a silk robe just got it like that. I mean, you're just gonna think they look like Aunt Viv just killing the game. There is nothing wrong with the cotton robe though. Cotton robes are super warm. The only downside to like silk and satin is you can feel the cold. You can feel everything when it's nice and toasty in your house that's when you pull these out and it's really important for your clothes to be ironed especially if you're wearing something like a silk or satin piece something looking ironed versus something looking wrinkly can really determine how put together your outfit looks the more clean and put together your outfit looks the more expensive you look when it comes to shoes i would say that pointy toe shoes tend to look a little bit more expensive. No shade to round toe shoes or anyone who wears round toe shoes because I even have round toe shoes. These are thigh high boots that I bought about a couple months ago. They were very inexpensive. I had to buy these because I was looking for these kinds of boots for ages and they were always over $100, like all the time. And the thing is, 
my legs are skinnier so I end up always finding boots that are way too loose on my legs and it's always better to have it fit you nice like a glove. You don't want your boots looking too loose. Something looks super put together and just super sleek definitely looks like it has a more expensive price tag. I feel like when people see these, they don't think this would be $40. I know not everyone can wear a pointy toe, so that's fine. But what I'm saying is that if you can, you should. Brown toed shoes are more on the safe side and pointy toe shoes are more on the sexy side. Neutrals tend to look more expensive. I'm telling you, I'm not saying wearing colors, bright colors are a bad thing. I'm bringing up Olivia Pope again because she wore a lot of neutrals. Think about it, when someone's wearing a all white outfit or an all black outfit, you'd be like, ooh, that's me. Bright colors are still fun. Neutrals just have like a simplified look. And when they look a little simplified, they tend to look like you paid a higher price. Hair and makeup really do matter. They can complement an outfit or they can take away from an outfit. If you have a wonderful outfit with your hair, needs help, and your makeup needs more help, let me tell you something, okay? People, we're gonna stop looking at your outfit and start looking at those things. I bought outfits from Burlington Coat Factory for like $20, okay? And I've slayed my hair and makeup and when it all comes together, it looks like I've spent a lot of money on my outfit, but little do people know. Even if you buy a cheap outfit and you have a little bit of money to spend on like an accessory that's more expensive, let's say like, a Gucci belt or like a Chanel bag that automatically will make you look more expensive even if the rest of your outfit is like $15 no one will know because they'll be paying attention to the fact that you have an expensive accessory on you know what's so crazy a hundred thousand on the wrist but my outfit though sixty dollars if you do happen to have more money to spend on accessories Go ahead, do you, boo. But even if you don't have enough money to spend on high-end accessories, you can still look for accessories that have a tasteful look and a tasteful style. Thrifting will really help you out. Thrifting will open the door to luxury items for cheap prices. One thing I love about thrifting is that you will find a piece that you will probably never see anyone else wear. And that in itself will make you look unique. You can find vintage pieces. You can find like very like luxurious, high-end looking pieces. And they would be like one third of the price or less. One thing that I will warn you about are pieces that have like gems and stones and stuff in them. I have a lot of those, but at the same time, there are certain gems and stones that look cheap automatically. You can buy things with low cost or that have a lower price tag, but that have a good material, that have good design, that don't have like a cheap style. There are also some things that are hella expensive and look cheap simply because they have a certain style. There's some things I stayed away from and didn't buy because I'm like, why y'all had to mess it up with these ugly little things on there? Like why, why? Why? Maybe it's because I shop a lot and also I style for people so I just know certain trends. I know what is usually more expensive. I know what is usually a little cheaper. So maybe that's just something that I'm more aware of. But I'm just telling you now, those gems and those stones, some of them be looking crazy, okay? Some of them just be looking like they're not supposed to be there. Just beware. I mean, if that's your taste, then just or not an observation. The last tip I'll give is the confidence that you have. If you carry yourself in a certain way, you will be smashing edges all over the place. The real key to looking expensive is not only about the clothes, it's not only about the hair, it's not only about the accessories and the makeup, it is 
definitely about the confidence. You have to carry yourself in a certain way to make it look like, you know, you, you went from here, now you here, okay? So these are all the tips I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you supporting me. I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Feel free to comment below on this video and the tips that I've given. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys.